Hello. So, we've seen one way of finding local extrema, find the critical points, use the sign graph, determine where those points are, maximums, minimums, right, by looking at the transition of the sign on the sign graph. But it turns out there's another way of doing this. So we can apply something called the second derivative test. So we'll get into exactly the specifics of this test and how it works, um, but the sort of general areas where this is useful is if it's difficult to tell the sign of a derivative. So if you sort of take a derivative and you're trying to do this sign chart thing and you get this total mess, sometimes it's sort of difficult, right, to do the actual sign chart. Another option is maybe for whatever reason you already know the critical point, but you don't actually know whether it is a maximum or minimum. You just know that there's some sort of potential extremity there. And instead of then going through all the work of trying to find the derivative and do the factoring to get the sign chart to check the point, second derivative test can be sort of a faster way of going about this. All right, so what is the second derivative test? So the second derivative test is one of those things that's relatively easy to state, which I'll do in just a second, but the sort of why it works or what's even happening is maybe a little more opaque at first glance. So the second derivative test says, let f be some function, right, some real value thing, and it needs to be differentiable. In fact, it needs to be sort of twice differentiable, meaning you have to be able to take a second derivative. Then, we sort of can keep going and suppose that there's some sort of point where the derivative is zero at that point. So this is saying you have a function, you can take a derivative, and you have a critical point. Then if you take the second derivative and look at that critical point, right, so you plug in that x value, if you know that the second derivative is some strictly positive number, right, because again we're plugging in the value here, this isn't an f of x, it's you're actually computing a value, so if it's a, some strictly positive thing, then you know that that critical point is a minimum. So not only do you know it's an extrema, but you know it's a minimum. Likewise, if you know that that second derivative, when you plug it in, you get some strictly negative number, like negative seven or whatever, then you know that that point is, again, not just an extrema, but is a maximum, okay? So if you have a critical point, you can test whether it's a maximum or minimum as sort of giving you the, whether or not it's an extrema for free in some sense here, but you can test which type of extrema it is by plugging that value into the second derivative. So positive, it's a minimum. Negative, it's a maximum. It's quote unquote, just that easy. <laughs> of course, nothing in math is quite just that easy. So there are some caveats here. So and very importantly, you may have noticed the second derivative test says nothing at all about what happens if you get zero. And that doesn't mean that you can sort of assume the opposite. So one may think if you plug in a critical point into the second derivative, if you don't get a positive number, then it can't be a minimum. Or if you don't get a negative number, it can't be a maximum. So getting zero is none of those, so it must not be an extrema, right? This is an understandable thought process, but it's not true. <laughs> so. If you plug in a critical number and get zero, then the test is said to have just failed at that value, meaning that it tells you nothing at all. You, you have no idea what's happening from the second derivative test. It could still be a positive, or sorry, it could still be a maximum, could still be a minimum, might be neither. You have no way of knowing from the second derivative test. Okay, so let's see a few examples so we can see how this is working. So let's consider as a start, f of x is x squared. So f of x, if we take the derivative, this is gonna give us two x, right? So that tells us we have a critical point at zero. Plugging in zero to the second derivative, well, the second derivative is just two. So no matter what I plug in, I'm gonna get two. Two is positive, so that tells me that point, zero comma f of zero, or just zero, zero, is a local minimum, right? Because the second derivative is positive, that tells me I have a local minimum. What about this cubed, right? So g of x is some x cubed, which hopefully you can sort of picture that in your head, but still uh, having a derivative, right? So take the derivative, 3x squared. Again, we have a critical point at zero. 
If we plug in zero to the second derivative, second derivative is six x, so plugging in zero, we get zero. But that tells us the second derivative test failed. And in fact, if you think about what the cube looks like, right, so as a quick thing, right, the cube is some sort of weird like up, over, and then up again, but sort of importantly, at zero, there's no local extrema, right? There's, it's not a maximum or a minimum, it's some sort of weird turning point thing. So this may lead you to the idea that, you know, again, because the test failed, it's neither. But let's look at one more example, h of x being x to the fourth. So again, taking the derivative, 4x cubed, again, critical point at zero. Plug in zero to the second derivative. So taking another derivative, we get 12x squared. Plug in zero, we get zero. So again, the second derivative test failed. And again, you know, Pattern recognition, you may look up at g of x and go, ah, so there must not be a local extrema. But if you think about what x to the fourth looks like, it looks just like a tighter version of the parabola that x squared looks like. So in fact, it does have a minimum at zero. So zero, zero is a local minimum. So here's an example, right, where g of x, the second derivative test failed and it wasn't an extrema. h of x, the second derivative test failed and it was an extrema. So if the test fails, we don't know anything, okay? That's really important to come, come away with this, with that sort of piece in your head, all right? So, second derivative test can tell us if a critical point is a maximum or minimum, but it can also fail, right? Why do we know that the second derivative test being positive or negative means that the function is a minimum, right? Has a minimum or a maximum there? Well, this is actually due to our Good friend from way back even in pre-calculus, right, concavity. So the second derivative, if you remember, is determining the concavity of the function. So as a quick sort of two second reminder here, if the second derivative is positive, then the function is concave up. So that means that it's bending upward away from the tangent line, right? So if you think of this as the tangent line is some horizontal line to start with, then being concave up means that the function is sort of bending away from it, making some sort of upward cup where the tangent point is at the bottom of that cup. So it looks sort of like this, where we have this red line would be that tangent line, right? That horizontal bit down here. And the function is sort of bending up and away. That's what that positive concavity means. But that means that where we were tangent had to be a minimum, right? Because it's bending up and away in both the other cases. But sort of similarly, if the second derivative were negative, that would give us a concave down situation. And so, right, again, we would have this tangent line. The concave down means that it's sort of pulling down in a way. And so a negative would give you a local maximum, right? So the concavity is what's driving the second derivative test. All right, so what do we do? We have another tool in our toolbox that classifies local extrema, the second derivative test. And it can be very quick and powerful, right? Just plugging in a value and getting an answer, but the test can also fail. It's not always going to work, right? So getting a zero at a critical point for the second derivative, it tells us nothing. We don't know if it's an extrema or not. We don't know what type it might be. It might not be an extrema at all, but it could still be one. If we're basically, it's as if we didn't even do the test, right? We're right back where we started. Nonetheless, it can be a speedy way of determining the nature of a critical point sort of when it works, which sort of in practice is a lot of the time. So it is sort of a nice quick way of checking something. Again, if it's in one of those situations where sort of a sign chart is just a lot more effort, or if you sort of already know uh, what the critical point might be sort of going in and you just wanna do a quick check. So it's usually under those circumstances worth it to just sort of try it Worst case, you get that the second derivative is zero, and then you have to go through the sort of more laborious version, right, of, of going through the actual sign chart to actually check, okay? So that is that.